Hi everyone and welcome to cartoon workshop number nine. We're going to be doing a coyote today. A howling coyote. And uh, before we start, out of curiosity, I wonder what a coyote sounds like. Hmm. What sound does a coyote make? Huh? Okay, awesome. Thanks guys for that wonderful uh, coyote sound effect. What I want to do is I want to jump right into the workshop today. Make sure you have your circle maker. Make sure you have your pencil. Make sure you have your paper and eraser. Don't forget to always draw lightly and have lots of patience. Your picture doesn't have to look like the picture I'm creating. You are creating your own version of a coyote. So, with that being said, let's get started. Let's start this coyote cartoon. So I have a little special guest with me who is also uh, joining in the cartoon festivities. Isla's going to uh, listen in and maybe learn or not. I mean, she's a little young, but hey, that's okay. Let's get our pencil ready. Really important that we practice drawing lightly. And I can't emphasize that enough that Drawing lightly helps us mold our character. And this coyote that we're going to be drawing, we're going to be basing it on shapes. We're going to be doing circles. And then from those circles, we're going to be adding more construction lines. And then after we've added those construction lines, kind of like this guy right here, we've had construction lines. And if you have a look at this here, you'll see more construction lines. When we create this character, we are going to be um, drawing it lightly so that we can then go over it um, with a darker pencil or press down harder and add that extra fun detail. Are you ready? Okay. I'm actually going to just practice really quickly drawing some, uh, some circles. If you have a circle maker, perfect, then you're okay. But I'm just really quickly going to get my hands sorted out. I'm just going to do some practice circles just to get started. I'm going to go over and over and over again doing those practice circles. And in fact, just to show you what I'm talking about with my hand, what I'm doing is I am moving my finger over and over and over. There we go. Nice light circles. And if you look, as I'm drawing this, if I'm drawing a small circle, I'm going to uh, anchor my hand down and I'm just going to move my fingers. When I'm drawing a bigger circle, I'm going to be using my wrist as the anchor. And if I was drawing an even bigger circle, I would be using my whole entire arm. Although I'm not doing a great job just now because I'm focusing too much on the camera. But you get the idea. Okay. So, really important that we uh, really master drawing circles. So for the young artists who are working on this today, don't panic. Your picture doesn't have to look great because um, you're just practicing. Or you can use that circle maker. Jam jar, a lid, anything. So let's make those circles. We're going to start with the body. Okay, so before we start with the body, Isla's going to come join us. Yes, hi. Okay, so we're going to start with the body. So what I'm going to do first is you're going to notice here, I'm going to do this shape, then this shape, and then I'm going to come up here and do the head. Okay, so that's what we're about to do just now. Okay, so. You having fun there? Nice. Okay, so we're going to do the chest of the character. 
That's right, the chest. And after we've drawn the chest, we're going to move slightly over and draw the back of the character. So watch carefully as I've, how I've drawn that shape. And then finally, on a somewhat of an angle, we're going to draw the head. Okay, so I've done this for you to be able to um, draw all at the same time. So I've drawn those three shapes quite quickly so that you get a good idea as to how it looks in comparison to the other circles. Okay, so this is the chest of the coyote. We've got the head of the coyote, and then we've got the back, where the back legs go, of the coyote. Okay, are we okay? I'm going to move my little other little coyote here out of the way a little bit. He's just going to tuck away off more to the corner there. Okay. Hey. Yes, Isla, I agree. We need to make sure that these guys know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's start with the arms. Yeah, yeah. Now, what's interesting, the coyote's front, the arms, are kind of similar to a human. So they have their paws are here. This would be kind of like where they step. Most of the time the, the coyote uh, and other animals walk on like this part of their, of their paws, of their hand. So let's create that, that effect, that look. So we're gonna start with drawing somewhat at an angle the, the legs, they're gonna come down. And then we're gonna just make it quite easy. So not gonna to go too difficult here. Um, but what's interesting is this here is actually the elbow and their arm actually goes way up high that we just don't see it. It's kind of cool, eh? So um, that's just a kind of a structure line. I might make it a little bit bigger to make it a little bit cartoonish. And I might make the paw come out a bit more. And generally, there's like a tiny little bit there that they, they don't walk on. That's like the palm right there. But we don't really see that much. Okay, so there's our furry front, the front arm. And as I said, what's really cool is this here is the elbow. Neat, eh? All right, let's draw the back leg. Now, the back leg is really interesting. So we've got the front leg, right? So there's the front leg. I've drawn it on this character here. So the back leg is the more challenging one to do. So when you look at a person, so let's quickly draw a person. So here's a, a, an average person, average guy. There's his arms and here's his legs and here's his feet. So if a person was to stand on their tiptoes, so let's get that person to stand on their tiptoes. So that same guy is now on his tiptoes like this, right? You guys stand on your tiptoes when you're trying to reach something in the cupboard. There he's on his tiptoes. That's what the back of a dog looks like. The back leg of a dog. Let's now stretch that out. So we're gonna do the tiptoes. We're gonna now do the we're going to stretch this part of the of the foot out and then we're going to do the heel which is right there and then we're going to come out like this now let's have that human bend his legs so let's start that again let's have the human this guy i'm going to have him bend his legs so i'm going to go um down like what am i going to do here i'm just going to erase that let's just get rid of that part so this human guy is going to have his legs bent so now this guy He's on his tiptoes, he's got his jeans on, and he's doing this. He's about to r run a race or something. So see what I'm doing here? Whoops. That's right, Isla. So this guy's about to run a race, and he's on his uh, hands and knees. Maybe he's got knuckles because he's about to race. Let's actually fix that leg a bit more. Okay, so, and then the guys, maybe he's maybe he's howling up like at the moon. Maybe he's looking up at the moon like like a, like a coyote. So there's this guy. What? Yeah, What's he yeah. doing? He's looking up there. 
So that guy looks very similar to this dog, but except here, we do this in red, except here we exaggerate this. This comes out more. Right, so let's draw that, okay? So to make it easier for you guys, I'm gonna draw the foot here, the toe. I'm gonna come out like this. I'm gonna go like that. So have a look at how I drew that. So this is the toe, lined it up the best I could here. And then the heel comes way out and then the dogs, and this is the knee right here, and it comes out like that. So I want you guys to work on that for a little bit. Have a look at that. Okay. So next, what we're going to do is we can put the tail in. Now I didn't leave a lot of room for the tail, but that's okay. We can just have the tail coming from, and let me show you this in red. The tail comes from, it's part of the spine. So this animal, um, its spine, follow me with the red here. It's, it's actually, uh, the spine comes right in here like this, follows the back of the animal, and then the tail is a continuation of its back. And it's gonna come out like that. Hope that makes sense. So let's erase all that because I don't want that in my picture. And I'll also have to move this guy over here a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Well, I lost him on my dog. Move that down here. Let's move our, our dog over here, up here more. There we go. More space. Okay. So now let's put the tail in. So the tail is going to come in here. And curve up and we can make it a bit furry because the coyote has a nice furry tail. All right, looking good so far. Uh, we're going to now move into the... Okay, let's do the head. Let's do uh, the howling face. So we're going to start with the neck and we're going to have uh, the neck coming up. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring, I'm going to have a nice strong line. And in fact, th this is something that maybe I want to show you guys. So I'm going to get my camera out. I want you to see what is really important here about uh, your line drawings. There's a lot of young artists aren't confident. And a lot of young artists will do the sketching that, that um, you know, is quite common. You will, you will sketch and you'll get the line because ultimately you want your line to come up, whoops, your line to come up like this. That's the line that I'm looking for, right, with the howling coyote. The howling coyote is going to have a line that comes up like this. It's going to come up like this, blah, blah, blah. But, but what I want you to see is I'm going to erase all that. A lot of young artists aren't confident, so they will just sketch. And they will get that line up there like this, and they will be copying, and they'll do this, and it becomes a very sketched look. And then they'll have the, the, the mouth come up like this, and they will do the, the, the other part of the snout, and that's okay. Totally okay to have the um, lines sketchy. I mean, that's a style in, on its own. But try practicing having more confident strokes. So what I mean by that is, I'm going to erase all this. I'm going to erase these sketchy lines, and I'm going to show you, similar to when you're doing circle practice, I'm going to put my hand here, and I'm going to be ready for this, this line I'm going to make. So I'm going to just draw the line confidently. So I've gone back and forth. I have put my hand in a pivot spot. So I'm, I'm good right there. And then the, the next part, I'm going to come up. I'm confident it's going to be there. And then I'm going to turn my page the other way. And I know I'm going to have a line that's going to come up like that. And just be confident. Uh, my next line, I'm looking at my other picture here. It's going to come down, it's going to come up like that. And you can always come back and fix these. And it's okay if you do, if you choose to do it uh, the other way, that's fine. I might even change this. I might actually have this curving the other way. So I might um, 
get my pivot point here and I might come out. So let me do that again. Come out like that. Okay, so there's our Howling Coyote. Okay. So it's got a big, big snout. Going to put a nice big nose on the guy. And you might want to turn your page the way I've turned my page because by turning your page, you might feel more confident with how the character looks uh, as a profile. So I might fix this snout a smidge, bring it up a bit more, fix some of these. I don't need these construction lines here anymore. So I'm going to get rid of these construction lines. Um, I might make the um, bottom part a smidge smaller, but otherwise I'm pretty pretty happy with the howling look. But you know what I can do too is because the character has fur, we could bring some lines down here and have you know the fur come down just a bit, right? And have more fur. There we go. And I might get kind of a furrier kind of front. Don't go, don't go too furry. Okay, so there's the look so far. And what we want to do is we want to have the ears put in. So by having the ears put in, we're going to... Um, and let me... get the, uh, the head a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make the head a smidge bigger. So I've just raised up the head a smidge. And this is the molding part that I talked about at the beginning of the workshop about molding the, the, the character with the shapes. And I'm going to come in a little bit. And before, actually, before we do the ears, let's do the other part of the neck. So let's get the other part of the neck. I'm going to bring it in just a smidge like that. And again, I was curving, uh, I was finding a pivot point with my hand. And um, so my, my hand was here, and I basically rotated my hand to make that line. Again, I'm going to erase some of my construction lines that I don't need anymore. I'll do it lightly so that you can see them still a little bit. Erasing some more of my construction lines. All right. Okay, so let's do the ear. So the ear is really hard to do. It's really pivotal. So we're going to have the ear. I'm going to kind of get a feel as, as to where this ear should go. The ear needs to be pointing downwards. It needs to be more like that. Okay, does that look okay? And then the ear is going to have a little bit of a shadow inside there. So there's the howling ear. I might mold this a little bit more to make it a bit cartoonish, a bit more cartoonish. I've also noticed that I feel like the head is bigger than I like and the neck is thicker than I want, but that's because that's what the character really looks like. Okay. Uh, let's get an eyeball in there. That will make it look cartoonish. I'm all about the cartoon. You don't have to uh, make it look too cartoonish. I'm actually, you see what I'm doing here? I'm by habit just making the uh, where the eyeball is going to go. I'm bringing the, I'm making more of a, a forehead. I'm giving the character a forehead here. And then I'm going to have a fun eyeball that's going to come right out like that, looking up at the moon. And watch this. I'm going to do this lightly. So with your pencil, draw a light circle like this. Okay? While you're doing that, I'm going to work on my forehead still. So you guys got that circle, and you've drawn that circle lightly, right? Okay. What I want to do now is I want to put the iris in. So I've got the iris in there. And then what I want to do is I want to show the reflection of the moon. So with your eraser, put like a little white spot right there to show the reflection of the moon. 
Make sense? Okay. And I'm going to have some hair sticking out like this. And maybe an eyebrow, maybe some brackets under the eyes. Okay, so there's our, our coyote howling up to the sky. What I want to do next is I want to make the character not look so one-dimensional or two-dimensional. I want to make it look more 3D. So check this out. We're going to add, are you guys ready? I'm going to add another, the other leg in the background, just like that. And I'm going to shade that in. And I think, I think that will help make it look a bit more 3D. Get rid of some of these construction lines again, right? That, there's another construction line I don't need. I'm going to maybe shade that even a smidge darker, really carefully with my pencil. There's a, a strategy for shading, and I've mentioned it in other workshops, but if you're watching this for the first time, then you might not know the strategy. The strategy is to press down hard with your pencil on another page and get your pencil flat and then keep that same grip and then start to shade the area that you want to um, darken. All right, and then now the other part, we're going to do a mirror of the back leg uh, on the other side. So it's going to go down, down, and down. And again, I'm going to shade that in. I'm doing it a bit rushed. You guys have your pencils and you can take your time doing some nice pencil shading. Okay, I can get rid of now this. I don't need this construction line anymore. So that construction line is going to go. All right. Oh, more construction lines to get rid of. Just there. And this one here, we don't need that construction line. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the hair down a bit more, down here, and bring the stomach up. So the stomach is usually smaller and the chest is bigger. Okay, now this is the part where I'm looking and seeing if I want to make this character look better because I've only drawn this character twice. I've drawn it once here, right? And that's it. And I'm looking to see if I can make this character look a bit better. I have problems with the face. I'm not a huge fan of how the face turned out. Could I make the face look a bit more 3D? Well, I could potentially try something. So have a look at this. This is another strategy. I could do a bit of erasing here. And what I could do is I could bring the forehead out a bit more, like this, and I could try to put in the other eye. And you guys can tell me whether you think that works. And I can get the eraser, and I could put the reflection in. Whoops, let's do that reflection small. Does that work? Does that now make the character look even more three-dimensional? And I could put the other eyebrow in. And that means the ear, maybe the ear has to be down a bit more. Have a look. Maybe the jaw of the, I need the jaw to be shown a bit more on the, on the coyote, right? Because they have a jaw, right? Just like we have a jaw. So I'm looking at my picture and seeing how I can mold that to make the, it look a little bit better. Uh, in here, this could be improved. 
So check this out. I'm now going to bring this in and make this now look three-dimensional. So suddenly I'm bringing, I'm molding the, the picture even more. I'm going to bring this bottom, uh, sorry, the, the snout, the bottom of the snout here out a bit more. Yeah, that's looking a bit better now. Um, the nose, the nose doesn't make sense. Now that it's three dimensional, we need to see more of the nose. So now the nose needs to be more like that. We need to add a reflection on the nose. Put a reflection right there. It's all starting to make more sense because we've now made the character look more three dimensional. Does the ear need to be longer? I could try, I could grab the eraser. And guys, it's okay to do this with your picture. You could be erasing lots. The reason why you're erasing lots, the reason why you're exploring this picture is because this is not the only time you've drawn this picture or you will be drawing this picture. You might want to try this a second time. By all means, use this as your rough sketch and then later redraw it. Use the same technique that I've done, but redraw it. So this is you exploring, and now the second time you've drawn it is gonna be where you're mastering the picture, just like this. Here we are, I did a rough sketch here, I'll show you. I've done a rough sketch here, where I got a feel as to how the character is gonna be positioned. Here, I'm molding the character, but what I might wanna do is I, want, I might wanna draw this a third time where I've now kind of now mastered what the picture looks like. Um, like for example, I might want to fix the ear up a little bit. I might want to color, shade, I might want to do more with it. But ultimately, uh, I'm going to leave it at this. This is the coyote drawing. Um, I might play around with the ear a bit more, but you've got a good sense now as to how to draw a coyote. Um, and I can't wait to hear maybe about your picture and how you uh, created your coyote picture. Okay, folks, that ends our Coyote Workshop. Um, don't forget to post your cartoon to me. I would love to be able to see your work. It's always great seeing the amazing artists that are out there. Uh, with that being said, uh, we are going to meet again on Monday at the same time at 11.30 a.m. We're going to be doing a very creative drawing. And I'm not going to say too much about it. Look for the post. Um, but it's going to be uh, requiring a lot of your imagination and creativity uh, in order to finish this cartoon on Monday. So, I will see you then. Bye for now. <laughs>